Shalom, Yasharallah, peace Israel. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kadash, Barak Katham. This is your brother, Kabash Kabash, coming at you with another lesson. And um, I want to tell you, brothers, about this phone I got, uh, which is a real good phone. It's pretty good. Um, you can do like a double window on here. Uh, you can see to the right side, you, you see these two uh, rectangles right here. And it's like a double window. So um, you can do like, this is on the LG Stylo 5, I think. LG Stylo 5, yeah, something like that. And uh, it's a great instrument to use, the double window, if you want to go into the meaning of words and stuff like that while still on a blue letter. And that's kind of hard to do, <laughs> you know. Uh, but with some of the new phones, you can do that. So I just want to bring that out to your attention. All right. Today, um, I'm gonna go over how we know we are the how, how the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans um, are the real Hebrew Israelites. Okay, all right. I wish I had uh, more windows on here that I could use, but you know this is a blessing right here, just having this. Okay, so because um, I want to show maps and stuff like that, but. You know, we'll see. We'll just, you know, roll with the spirit and, you know, Lord willing, I might get some more, find out more features about this phone. Okay. Um, but let's get into it. Uh, how do we know that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the real Hebrew Israelites? Okay. Now, first you can go into, go into the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Okay. Um... And you can start at basically at verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe and to do his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord will set thee above all nations. Okay? Above all nations. Okay? So the Lord has a chosen he has a chosen people. He said you will be set above all nations. Um, now, I have my Webster Dictionary here. And let's look up the word nations. Okay? Because you know you have different nations on the, on the earth. Okay? You have many nations and many countries of the earth. A lot of people respect the Jews that are in uh, Israel right now. They call themselves a nation. You know, America is a nation. Egypt, that's a nation, that's another country, okay? So let's look at that word nation, all right? Because people think that, that Yahweh Shai, that God is for everybody. I mean, Yahweh is for everybody whom the word Elohim calls God. But nah, he's not for everybody. All right, let me get that word nation in a... T Okay. Nation, nation, nation. Let me see. N A T I O N S. Okay. N O No, N A T I know it's in here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right. Now, I should, okay, nation. All right. A community of people composed of one or more nationalities. Okay. With its own territory and government. A territory of a nation. A tribe. A federation of tribes. Okay. So, perfect example, America. We are a country of many nations, okay? And the definition says a community of people composed of one or more nationalities with its own territory and government. So isn't America a nation? You have many di different nationalities here, okay? You have many different nationalities here, all right? Okay? Um, okay? Uh, let me go into, okay, let's read verse 28 again in verse 1. 
and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee above high all nations. Okay? And um, when you go to the next definition, it says the territory of a nation, okay, tribe or federation, okay, all right. So all these other countries, they're nations, okay. Now back in the day, um, you had uh, the nations were separate, okay. You have the Israelites, you had the heathens had their territory, the Ethiopians, the uh, Moabites, um. And you know, uh, different other different other uh, nations, you know, were separate. Canaanites, Jebusites, you know, okay. But the, the Most High promised us. He said, "If it shall and it shall come to pass, if thou hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy power, okay, to observe and do all His commandments." Which I command thee this day that the Lord will set thee upon high above all the nations of the earth. Okay? The so-called Black Hispanics and Native Americans are supposed to be on top right now. But we're not. Why? Because we have now hearkened to the law, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High. And I will get into that. Okay? Alright? Uh, now, let's go back to Limitations 5. Okay? At the bottom here. It says, remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. All right. Now, let me get my notes out here. Okay. All right. Let's see. I got a lot of stuff on this table here. <laughs> okay. All right. Since we're already in the blue letter, we can utilize Okay, now let's look at that role reproach. What does reproach mean? Scorn. Okay. Resting upon the condition of shame. Okay. So, you know, in Lamentations uh chapter five, verse one, it says, Remember. Oh Lord, what is come upon us? What has come upon us? Okay. The curses that are in Deuteronomy 28. Okay. Why? Because we have not hearkened to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Okay. Remember, oh Lord, what is come. Hold on, let me go back. Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. What is reproach? Shame. We are ashamed because we went off. Okay? We are ashamed. Okay? Um, now, what does that word reproach mean? It means shame. Okay? All right? Now, I'm trying to flip back and forth here. All right? Um, so basically we're supposed to be on top. All right. But when you get in deep into, uh, but when you go into limitations, um, you come to find out that, you know, but you know, we know we went off and, uh, when you go through all the scriptures beyond the book of Deuteronomy, you know, we, you know, we, you see Israel, uh, um, has been going through trials and tribulations and some of the prophets too, you know. Uh, but especially limita limit limitations uh, also verifies that we are under the curses today. Okay? All right? Um, let's see here. Okay, let's look back and forth. Okay, our inheritance is turned to strangers. Okay, let me make sure. Okay, all right. Oh. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. Okay, now it says in verse two, it says all these things, all these blessings shall come upon thee, 
and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power. Okay, it says, Blessed uh, shall thou be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field. And it just goes on and on and on how we should be blessed if we hearken to the laws and the statutes and commandments of the, of the Most High. Okay, all right. Now, all right. And it says, now when you go back to, uh, when you go back to limitations, okay, and it says, our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses uh, to aliens, all right? Now, all right. What is a stranger? A stranger is a person whom one does not know. Okay, so in Israel right now, there are strangers in our land. Okay, there are strangers in our land right now. Those are heathens. Those are Edomites. Okay, there might be a few Jakes over there, you know, but in the land of Israel right now, they are strangers. Okay, uh, when you go into that word um, alien, it means belonging to a foreign country or a nation. So they don't, those people over there are from other nations. They don't belong over there. All right. Those people are from other nations that don't belong over there, especially Edomites. You know, well, they're all Edomites, well, mainly Edomites over there. Um, but, you know, you might have some, you know, I don't know. I've never been to Israel, so you might have some, because I've seen some brown skin uh so-called jews and you know it's you know you wonder sometimes you know you don't know if they look arab or what nationality they are but um mainly the amnekites that are over there right now those, those are the aliens man they're not supposed to be in our land they are defiling our land right now okay um uh, there was a young lady that went to uh israel it was on youtube and she went on a bus and there was like roaches on the bus. There was like trash everywhere. And people are just uh, over exaggerating how Tel Aviv looks and all this stuff. Man, it's, it's crazy. But um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, let's go back up to verse 1 in Lamentations. It says, remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Okay. Now, when we're into the word reproach, it means the expansion of the expansion of disapproval or disappointment, shame. Okay, so the Most High is, you know, disappointed that we went off. Okay, disapprove. He disapproved of what we did. You know, ultimately, it was his will to, for it to happen, you know. You know, this is the most highest movie, but he is displeased. He does not like sin. All right. He does not like sin. All right. Now, let's go to the book of uh, Baruch. All right. I don't have it on my phone here, but we're going to go to it in the Apocrypha. Let's go to the book of Baruch, uh, chapter 3, verse 8. All right. Well, actually... Let me save that. I'm going to save that one, actually. I'm going to save that one. I'm going to save that one. All right. Um, okay, now where we want to go now? Okay, let's go to verse 15 in Leviticus 28. I meant, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to go to verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou not hearken unto the voice of of the Lord thy power to observe and do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee. Okay? All these curses shall come upon thee, the nation of Israel. Okay? All right? People say nation of Israel, nation of Israel all the time. Okay? But do you know what the word nation means? The word nation means a certain group of people, okay? It's a certain group of people, 
okay? And, and the nation of Israel is whom the Most High is talking about right here, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Now, I'm getting ready to go into some of the curses that you can kind of use as reference to uh, know who, to know that the Most High is dealing with the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Now, you know, you you may have a few uh, um you know, uh, I don't want to say confusion of face, but um, Israelite foreigners uh, who have faces of other nations, but uh, <coughs> so like you, who have faces of other nations, but have a soul of an Israelite. And if they do, you know, more than likely they're Israelite, you know, because if your father is an Israelite, then you are an Israelite, okay, no matter how you look, okay. But let's go down to uh, verse, like I said, let's go down to 15, verse 15 in Deuteronomy 28. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which is the law, which I command thee this day, that the curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay, now what is a curse? Okay. Curse is a cause a cause or great harm or evil. A solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punish punishment on someone or something. So since we did so since we uh, did not hearken to the law, statutes, and commandments, which I'm going to get into, and the Most High said, if you don't hearken to the laws and statutes and commandments, all these curses have come upon you, meaning harm, okay? Punishment, all right? Evil will come upon us, okay? And I'm going to get into some what some of those uh, punishments are, Okay? All right. Now, let's go into De Deuteronomy 28 and 16. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall thou be basket and thy store. Okay. Curse shall, thy, curse shall be the fruit of the body and the fruit of thy hand. And the increase of thy kin and flocks of sheep. Okay. Curse shall thou be when thou comest in. Curse shall thou be when thou goest out. Okay. Now I really want to get this one right here. When you go to work every day, especially if you're a so-called uh, black, Hispanic, or Native American. Now speaking from experience, um, as a so-called black man, I leave work. Not knowing if I'm going to get pulled over by the police. I leave to go to work. Um, when I go to the store, I don't know if I'm going to get pulled over by the police. Okay. It happened to me one time, actually. I came home. and um, Actually, several times. But the most recent one, I came home one night from, from work. And I ran a stop sign. You know, it wasn't that bad. I, I kind of slowed down. And then I just, you know, turned or whatever. And the police was right there. And he just said... First thing he asked me, what are you doing here? And I'm like, he, what are you doing here? And you ran a stop sign. I think those was his first words. Or maybe it's, well, it, it don't matter. He told me, what am I doing here? And I said, I live here. Then after that, he didn't want to have nothing to do because I guess he, you know, he could, uh, I thought, you know, it was going to be a different ending. But, um, you know, but yeah, you don't know if you're going to get, pulled over by the police because you look suspicious uh, and you, you have this thing called probable cause now you know which uh, states roughly you know roughly paraphrasing probable causes you can get pulled over or if you look suspicious you can get questioned you know they can pull you aside and question you because you look suspicious something like that okay so cursed thou shall be when thou comest in and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out when you comest in you know, even when you go to your job, you go go into your job, man, because you're a black guy, because you're a so-called Negro, Hispanic, Native American, you might get treated differently, you know? 
All right. And it, let's go down to verse uh, 20. The Lord shall send thee cursing, vexation, rebuke, and all that settest thine hand of, uh, unto. Let me read that again. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Okay? So, you know, you we forsaken the Most High, man, and an example of that is worshiping uh, the so-called white man's Im image of Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? Now, when you go into, um, what's it? I think that's Revelation. Hold on. Let me get it out. Let me get it out. Where's my? Okay. All right. You worship a white Jesus. Okay. All right. Well, you go to uh, Revelation 1 to 15. You know, it tells you how Yahweh shot look. All right. It says his feet were fine brass as if they refined in a furnace. His voice as the sound of many waters. Hold on, let me read. That was the New King James Version. It says, the King James Version is, His feet like unto fine brass, as if they burnt in a furnace. His voice as the sound of many waters. Okay? Now, when you look at brass, it's naturally brown. When you burn it, it actually becomes darker. So why would you have a picture of so-called white Jesus in your church? But yet, people still read uh, Revelation they know about Revelations 1 to 15, but yet you still have that picture of Cheshire, Bozier, uh, uh, Serapis, Ser Serapis Christi. Yeah, Serapis Christi um, in, your, in your church. It's, you're contradicting yourself. You know, that's, that's conflict, man. And the Most High is not the author of confusion. You know? Okay. Now let's go down to uh, Lamentations. Um... And let's read some of these verses here. We are orphans and father. Okay, let me see. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. And those those people who are in uh in uh, Israel today, man, those are not the true Israelites. Okay, let let me look that verse up. Uh, let me see. I know those who say they are Jews and are not. I know those who say they are Jews, but are not, okay? All right, let's pull that up. It says, uh... Now, a precept for Lamentations chapter 2 is Revelations 3 and 9. It says, Behold, I will make them of... Hold on. I think that's the wrong one. It says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Which say, Okay. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie, okay? And right now they're lying. They're, they're claiming that they're the Jews. They're claiming that they're the victims of anti-Semitism, okay? Which, you know, you do come from the line of Shem, uh, Esau. But you're also contradicting yourself because we also come from the line of Shem as well, okay? But these devils are not going to bring that out. They lie. Okay, they lie. It says, Behold, I will make them. Behold, I will make them. This is Revelations 3 and 9. It says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. 
Okay? Behold, I will make them come down and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. So those people that are in Israel today, they know their kingdom is, is getting ready to end. They know that they can get, they're getting ready to go into slavery. Their kingdom is falling right now, man. Just look around you. You know, you got this coronavirus. You got earthquakes in diverse places. Um, the economy is like off and on. Wars, rumors of wars, you know. Look at Donald Trump started, you know, starting to, uh, he killed the, uh, the military, the head military guy in Iran, you know, trying to pop off World War Three. You know, all these things are coming to pass, man, and, and <laughs> these Edomites, they trying to stay in power. They think they're going to stay in power, you know, but you can't, you, you, you can't go against, uh, you cannot go against Bible prophecy. You can't stop Bible prophecy from coming in. Okay, you can't stop it. All right. Um, okay. And uh, let's go back to, to some of the curses in Deuteronomy 28. Let's see, what did I start at? Okay. Um, it says the Lord shall make the pestilence, the Lord shall make the pestilence, pestilence cleave unto thee, until, until he have consumed thee from off the hand, whether thou goest, possesses it. The Lord shall smite thee, smite thee with consumption and fever. And with inflammation, and with extreme burning, with the swords, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Okay? Now, when it says the Lord shall smite thee with consumption and fever, and with inflammation, I do transportation for a living. The majority of the clients that I, that I uh, take to dialysis are mainly Jake, so-called blacks, Hispanics, uh, Native Americans. I'm not really, you know, I don't really transport because down here is the tribe of uh, Reuben that uh, that's the mainly the tribe down here. But I I never ran into Reuben's neighborhood and actually trans. I might have picked up a Reubenite before, but for the most part, <clears throat> Hispanics and natives, Hispanics and blacks, so-called blacks. Oh yeah, they're the ones that go to dialysis all the time, and why? Because they have, well, the law states uh, that we should not eat certain foods, okay? Um, you shouldn't eat pork, okay? You shouldn't eat, uh, um, well, pork is the main thing. And, you know, blacks and Hispanics, they love pork. They love pork. That's one example I'm going to use. That's the main example I'm going to use. Now, because they don't uh, watch what they eat, and a lot of our people eat, eat all these packaged foods, carbohydrates, and don't eat, um, you know, their veggies the way they should and drink water the way they should. Well, you're going to be cursed. Sickness is a curse. Okay. Inflammation. Okay. Um, heart disease is the number one killer uh, among every nation now. Especially Jake. Because Jake don't eat right. But heart disease is the, is the main killer in America. I mean, it, it outweighs... AIDS and HIV. I mean, just just not watching what you eat and and not uh, observing what you eat just because you want to eat a piece of pork just because it tastes good. You know, no man, you you gotta eat what's right. You know, eat 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 what the Most High told you to eat. Okay. But Jake loved pork. Jake, Jake loved that swine. And Jake, you you hear Jake say that. Jake say he loves swine. Where did, you, where did you get that word swine from in the first place? You got it from the scriptures. I mean, I never heard nobody say swine in school. I mean, pig, yeah. Okay? But if you know the word swine is in the scriptures and you know you're not supposed to eat it, why are you eating it? That's why we are under the curses because we have disobeyed, you know, the, the Heavenly Father. Okay? All right? When you go back up to 15 in Deuteronomy, it says... But it shall come to pass, 
if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day, all the curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And what is one of those curses? Pestilence. Okay, right here. Uh, the Lord shall smite thee with consumption and fever and inflammation, sickness. So if you keep eating that pork and if you keep eating all these unlawful foods, crabs, lobster, shrimp, the Lord is going to uh, deal with you, man. He's going to make you sick. <laughs> Pigs, lobsters, crabs, they're bottom feeders, man. Why would you eat that? Eat that. Oh, it's good. Okay. Well, you need to eat some things that are good for you. First of all, you need to eat this truth, which is the word. And also eat the foods that the Most High told you to eat. All right, let's keep going. Um, let's go down to Lamentations chapter 5, verse 3. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are widows. Okay. Today, uh, you have... Um, what is an orphan? Okay, let's go into here. What is an orphan? An orphan is a child whose parents are dead. Okay? And what are widows? A woman whose husband, a woman who has lost her husband uh, by de death and has not re remarried. Okay? An example of an orphan, you know, look at the little orphan Annie. You know? Look at that movie, Orphan Annie. Uh, Batman. Uh, Batman was an orphan. Um, his parents died. You know, and his butler had to raise him. Okay. Um, but yeah, during a transatlantic transatlantic slave trade, um, you know, we were brought to America, mainly, you know, and um, we were sold. Okay, we were sold. Our children were sold. Your husband could have been sold. Your wife could have been sold. You know, it was crazy, man. This white man wasn't wasn't trying to be uh, have pity on us. He didn't care, and today he still doesn't care. Even though he has laws and stuff um, in the books that he says that are protecting us, but nah, nah, he <laughs> different type of slavery, different type of slavery. All right, all right. Now let's go to uh, verse twenty three in the book of. Uh, Deuteronomy, I mean not the book of 23, in the book of Deuteronomy verse 23 and thy heaven that is over thee over thy head shall be brass and the earth that is under thee under thee shall be earned yeah think about it man, think about how many people are in the ghetto and you know you want to get out the ghetto and you're trying to work a job and you know, but you got kids, you know, you got this, you got that, you know, you got a wife you got to take care of, you know. The only place you can afford to be is in the hood, you know. It Jake is uh, one paycheck for being in poverty, man. I'm talking about myself. I'm just one paycheck away from being in poverty. If I lose one paycheck, man, I'm done. I got a few, yeah, I got a, a, a few dollars saved up in the bank. But still, I, de I depend on that main paycheck to come through so I can buy things. Okay. Um Okay, now let's go down to verse 4. In Lamentations 5, we have drunken our water for money. Our wood is so unto us. Okay? We have to pay for water, man. We have to pay for water. Back in the day, we didn't have to pay for water. It was free. You know, going about water um in wood and uh, it says our wood is sold unto us. Okay. Now you can use wood for many purposes. It, it's like a material. You can use it as fuel. You know, when, when it's cold, you can burn it for fire. Uh, you can use it to build houses. Okay. You can use it to build furniture. You can use it to build uh, certain uh, utensils such as forks, you know, uh, toothpicks. Um, we know ancient days. I don't think they had toothpicks. Maybe, you know. But use wood was th that material used for many things at that time. It was used to make ships, okay. Um, 
So our, our material has been sold unto us. Things that were free, you know. And the most I said, when you go back up to uh, verse 1. I think, let me see. It says, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and blessed be the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kin, and the flocks of thy sheep. Okay, blessed be thy basket and thy store. Okay, um, let me see. There was something else I wanted. I thought I. Uh, okay, and the Lord shall make thee plenty, plenty, plenteous in goods, in the fruit of the body, and in the fruit of the cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. So yeah, man. So we, we went, we went from the promises, the good promises, you know, of obeying the heavenly Father to having our resources sold unto us. Okay, like it says in um, uh, Limitations um, 5 and 4, it says, We have drunken our water for money, and our wood is sold unto us. You know, we're supposed, we are supposed to have that, the so-called Black Hispanics and Native Americans. We're not supposed to be, have our material sold unto us, especially like Gad and Reuben right now. This is their land. Now, I don't know, but these, these Edomites put them on so-called reservations and stuff. And, you know, which are slums, you know, um, I know out in the West, they're like slums, but here in Florida, South Florida, they have a pretty, you know, I've seen some of their reservations there. They, they have pretty good houses, but I think that's only because of the uh, casino. Um, the so-called white man put the Hard Rock Casino on their, land, on their land, and also they have like another casino there too. So the white man is basically paying, paying them out. You know, um, but you know, hey, that's that's how it is. Um, okay, okay. Now let's go down to um, Limitations chapter five, verse five. Our necks are under persecution. We may labor and have no rest. Okay, look at the transatlantic slave trade. You know. Those slaves work many hours in the night, man. Many hours in the night. In, I mean, in the day. In the night. Going into night. And today. Let's, let's fast forward to today. Personally, I, I have to work uh, six days a week. Uh, 10 to 12 hours a day. You know, just to make ends meet. You know, and I get, you know, I, get, I do get overtime, yes. But, you know, um, the other things I have to pay. You know. The other things I have to pay. And there's some other jakes out there too. But you got brothers out there working, you know, working and taking care of their family. Um, they have to take care of certain bills. Um, we're subject to payments. You know, we got to take care of baby mama, uh, child support. It says our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. When you go into that word persecution, it means um, hostility. Ill treatment, especially because of race or political, um, religious beliefs. Okay. Now, when you go into that word, uh, let me see. Okay, I got a precept for uh, uh, limitations five, and um, five. When you go into the uh, Deuteronomy, um, let me see, 28 and 48, yeah, 28 and 48. Okay, let's keep going. It says, therefore, thou shalt serve thy enemies with the Lord, so sin against thee in hunger and in thirst. And in nakedness, and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Okay, limitations five. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. Okay, 
Now, we're, we're still under that yoke today. A lot of us, a lot of Jake right now who are in the ghetto, a lot of Jake right now work. Uh, especially, um, I've seen the Levites here, man. Levites here work, man, for real. Levites in South Florida work. They work. I know one brother at my job, he, uh, he works like seven days a week. Seven days a week, day in, day out. He's like 50-something years old, and he just says, as long as I can make money, I'm going to keep working. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I do seven days a week every other weekend, but I usually do six days a week. And, you know, it's like you, you just push yourself, you push yourself to destruction. Okay? And Esau doesn't even have to lay a finger on us. He already knows, like in this time, like it says, um, and he shall put away the yoke of iron upon thy neck until... He have destroyed thee. Well, now Esau doesn't have to destroy us, lay a finger on us to destroy us. Being that we want to work and make money and make those extra peanuts, you know, so that we can put it in the process and get a little bit of peanut butter. We're going to keep doing that, man. A lot of Jacob will keep doing that until their health fails because they need that money. They need that money to support their family. And that's one way that uh, Esau can destroy us, man, by offering us peanuts, offering overtime. And then when you get the overtime, he's going to tax the heck out of you, you know. And then if you work too many hours, you do your, uh, your tax refund. Oh, well, you made too much money, so you owe us. You Really, Esau? We made too much money, so we owe you. And you've been taxing us on our paycheck. Wow, Esau, you got to pay for that, bro, for real. Got to pay for that. All right? Now, let's go down to uh, verse 6 in Lamentations 5 and 6. We have given the hand to the Egyptians, meaning we have given power to the Egyptians, okay? We have given our energy and power to the, Egypt, to the system by working a lot, by working a lot, okay, and in, in the Egyptians are the um, it's talking about here are the modern day Edomites, okay. We 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 work for uh, these Edomites, man. Every almost every company you can think of is is the head of that company is a Jew. The owner is a Jew, okay. And Jake be working for peanuts, and um, Esau be like, yeah, I'm gonna give you a twenty five cent raise, and you can get some overtime here and there. You know, give Jake peanuts. You know, Jake be getting happy. I'm going to make him a little bit more money. You know? It says, we have given the hand to the Egyptians and the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. You know? So we got to work to eat. We have to work to get a slice of bread. How many hours you got to put in to get a slice of bread? You know? It's crazy, man. And in Florida, uh, half your income, a lot of people's income, uh, with one income, you ain't going to be able to make it in South Florida. Not unless you have a good job. The majority of Jake down here have to get two, two sometimes three jobs just to make ends meet. You know, two full-time jobs and one part-time job, which <laughs> is crazy, man. It's crazy. I was doing two jobs one time, but, you know, the most high... Allow me to get a job where I can get, you know, a lot of overtime, you know. But, you know, even though you get that overtime money, man, you have to sacrifice from being from your family. You have to sac sacrifice your rest. And ultimately, when you get older, you, you, your body's going to be so worn out, you ain't going to be able to do it. That's why we want the kingdom to come back, man. Okay? That's why we want the kingdom to come back. That's why we want Yahweh Shah to come back, you know. So we won't have to work all these hours. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Deuteronomy twenty eight and forty forty nine. Hold on one second.
Okay. It says, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fleeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Okay, think about that. The so called blacks and, um, were brought to America, the so called Negroes, to a land that they, don't, they never knew. Okay. The white man has taken us from um from West Africa all the way here. Even though we had to flee to West Africa, you know, to get away from persecution, you know. And then the so-called Edomite, well not so-called, but the Edomite had to take us from um take us from West Africa to America and to enslave us, you know? All right. Um, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And it says that, okay, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way of I spake unto thee, that thou shalt see no, it no more again. And there, and, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies, for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Okay? All right? Transatlantic, transatlantic, transatlantic slave trade. All right, transatlantic uh, transatlantic slave trade. I, I, if you don't know what transatlantic slave trade is, look it up. Okay, we were brought here from uh, West Africa into America to be slaves. Okay, all right. Um. Okay. Let me see. Let me see here. All right. It says our fathers have sinned and are not. It says our fathers have sinned and are not. And we have borne their iniquities. Servants have ruled over us. There is not that doeth deliver us out of their hand. Okay. Okay. All right. I was getting a little confused here. Okay. Um. Limitations. Okay. Five and seven. Okay. I got a precept for limitations five and seven in the book of Baruch. All right. Uh, chapter three and verse five. Okay, it says, remember not the iniquities of our fathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. Okay, so our fathers went off, you know. So, you know, therefore that our fathers went off, we went off. Okay, because the father is the head of the house. All right. And, you know, some Jake grow, they grow up, they grow up with the daddy in the home. But if the daddy not right. They, uh, the, the child is going to father the daddy, you know, like being gangster, you know, smoking, dr uh, taking drugs, you know, drinking all the time, not working, you know. And, you know, hey, I don't want to say monkey see, monkey do, but when you're a child, one of the first, ro one of your first role models are your parents. Okay. One of your first role models are your parents. All right. Um, it says, servants have ruled over us. There is none that de doeth deliver us out of their hand. Okay. Now, I think I had a precept for that. Um, yes, actually, yes. Uh, the book of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 23. All right. 
Let me go there in this in the sword. All right, Genesis chapter twenty five. Let me see. Was it Genesis 25? Oh, 25 and 23, not 3. Okay. It says, uh, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations have are in thy womb. And this is the, this is the Most High. Um, this is the Most High talking to uh, Rebecca. All right. Hold on one second. I can't. Uh, let me read through this right quick. Uh, yeah, the Lord's talking to uh, Rebecca. I get Sarah and Rebecca confused in my mind. I just wanted to be sure that you know I was on point. But yeah, the Most High is talking to uh, Rebecca uh, in verse in Genesis twenty five and twenty three. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And one shall be stronger than the other, and the other, I mean, I lost my place. Let me read it again. And the Lord shall say unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. The one people shall be stronger than the other people, the elder shall serve the, the, the younger. Okay, and who was... The elder, the elder was Esau. Okay, proof of that. When you go out, when you go down to verse twenty-five, the first came out red all over, like an hairy garment, and his name, and they called him Esau. After that came his brother out, and his hand took heel on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. Okay. So Esau was the elder brother and Jacob was the younger brother. And it said in the scriptures, it says up here in verse 23, when you go down. Um, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. The one people shall be stronger than the other and the elder shall serve the younger. OK. All right. And when you go down to limitations. Uh, what was that? Let me see. Was that limitations? I think it was limitations. Yeah. Um, yeah. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doeth deliver us out of their hand. Yeah. So Esau is over us right now. Okay. He's over us right now. He's putting the so-called uh, black woman and Hispanic woman and um, some Native American women over us, okay? He's putting woman it over us, trying to fem feminize um, um, the men of Israel. And, you know, Esau knows, he, he knows we love our women, you know? He knows we, he loves our, we, we, we love our women. So he puts them in charge, puts them in certain jobs so that uh, the woman can be prideful Okay, and, and, and want to rule over us. And then also Esau puts these laws into place, sexual harassment and um uh prenup stuff and uh well not prenup stuff, but if 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 you if, if, if you've been married to a man for so long, you can take half of his wealth or something like that. You know, um all these ridiculous laws, man, that that help the woman out child support. You know, now I'm going to say this, Jake, take care of your baby. OK, take care of your, your seed. Don't let Esau have a reason to come up on you and get you for child support. All right. Get money orders, get checks, make copies of them. If you got to go to court, present that to the, the judge and say, look, judge, I'm taking care of my kids. And, you know, get your paperwork straight, get money orders or whatever, uh, copies. And, you know, if, if, if uh, <clears throat> you know, do, do what you got to do to take care of your kids. All right. OK. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, let's let's continue to go down here. Um, OK. 
Okay. It says, verse 9 in Lamentations, we got our bread with the pearl of our lives because of sword, because of the sword of the wilderness. Okay. Now, when you go into that word uh, pearl, it means exposed to danger. Okay. Uh, look at Jake, uh, especially the so-called Mexican. He he does construction work. Uh, Issachar. They do some dangerous stuff, man. I know, I know, I know. One one guy told me um, he seen this Mexican work on on the roof roofing, and uh, he was just carrying some some plywood on a ladder. I think I don't know how many feet he got up on the ladder or whatever, but the weight of that plywood made him fall back. He fell. And I mean that brother, this the Issacharite got up and started working again, man. You know, so some of these dangerous jobs that Jake do, they have to do it because they have to make money, man, just to get some bread. All right, and it says we we got our bread with the pearl of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Okay. All right, you know, scriptures also said. Curse shall thou be when thou goest in. Curse shall thou be when thou goest out. Especially if you're a so-called uh, Negro, you know, or a Hispanic, you know, you, you, you go buy bread for your family. You know, you may have to, you know, uh, first you got to get by your, your wicked ass people that are in your neighborhood. Then when you get to the suburbs to get to the grocery store, uh, you, you got the police eye on you, you know. And then, and I, and I know from experience too. Walk just walking into Walmart, man. Especially at night, you got all these uh, um, homeless people out there just waiting to ask you for money, not knowing what they're gonna do. You know, I'm on edge. And anytime I go into Walmart at night, I'm like, I'm like looking to the left, looking to the right, you know, and cause I'm, I'm it's like I'm ready. My adrenaline's up, my testosterone. Any dude, any dude try to rush me, okay, <laughs> I'm like prepared, you know. I'm not saying I have a gun. I don't have a gun, but, you know, you just have to be, you know, uh, circumspect, look all around you, you know. But, yeah, man, this is it's crazy. Those curses are crazy. Um, our skin was black like, like an oven because of the terrible famine. Okay, now this verse clarifies who the real Israelites are also. It says our skin was black like an oven. Now, does a so-called Jew look like a... Is 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 their skin black like an oven? Okay, yeah, their skin was they were put in the ovens in Nazi Germany, you know, and I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, people always cry, cry about that. Oh, the what happened to you was so terrible. But where anytime a black person talks about slavery, everybody says, Get over it, get over it, get over it. But oh, but the Jews, they went through persecution, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all right. When you so-called white people are going into slavery, you so-called Edomites, okay, we're not going to, there's going to be a way, boy, that's going to be way worse than the Holy Ghost. That's going to be way worse than what we went through. And nobody's going to have pity for you. Even the he other heathens going to want to fuck you up. <laughs> you know? All right. Um... They ravaged the women in Zion. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, verse 11 in Lamentations 5. They ravaged the women in Zion and the maids in the cities of Judah. Princes are hanged up by their hand, their faces of the elders not honored. Okay, back in slavery, um, we were called, especially the Negroes were called boy. You know, they didn't they didn't they didn't respect the older older black man, 80, 70 years old. They called the 80, 70 year old black man a boy. You know, they had lynchings. It says they took the young men to grind. Wait a minute, no. The print okay, verse 12 in Lamentations 5. Princes are hanged upon by their hand. Their the faces of the elders were not honored. Okay? So you had a lot of uh uh Jacob's who who were hanged, lynchings, picnic. When you look up picnic, it meant like uh pick a nigga, that the lynch. Okay? There were a lot of lynchings uh back in the day. 
But nah, people say get over it. Get over it. Get over it. You, you know, you, and you even have some some um uh uh northern tribe saying get over it. No, the northern northern tribe think some some of the northern tribe, especially Manessa, because uh, a lot of Manessas down here are like have white skin, and they think they're white privilege, and I see that all the time. You know, yeah, they own a lot of companies in South Florida. You know, they do. But it, but that gives them a lot of pride, making them think, oh, I'm privileged. I have white skin, even though I speak Spanish, you know. And some of them might be Edomites, you know. You never know, but, you know. Um, okay, let me go into uh, 13. They took the young men to grind, and the children were fell under the wood. Okay, when you go into that word grind, it means reduced to small particles or, or powder by crushing it. Okay, all right, so you can work your hands down to the bone, man. You know, and here in America, you work so much that your hands and your body are just reduced to nothing. You know, you work so hard, your body's broken down, and, and that's still happening today. You, you know, a lot of Jake are working uh, two jobs. A lot of work, Jake are working six days a week, seven days a week just to make ends meet. You know? Okay. Uh, let's go to... Uh, let's just keep going here. The elders have ceased from the gate. The young men from their music. The joy of, of our heart is ceased. Our dance is turned to mourning. Who's mourning right now? The so-called Black Hispanics and Native Americans. We're mourning because, um, you know, we're still in captivity, man. I mean, yeah, we make music videos and stuff like that. You may dance to it. But, you know, uh, Ed Edomites put those specific people at the top to make you dance and, you know, whatever to go to the club to feel good. And then when you waste your money in the club, or uh, going to those uh, concerts and stuff like that, you got to go back to work to get more money from him so you can save more money to help get a little bit of pleasure. Again, you know, it's I know it's kind of, you know, all over the place what I'm saying, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? Okay. Now, let's go into some of those curses, man. Let's go into some of those curses because these curses really... Talk about who the real Israelites are. Okay. All right. Let me keep going. I think I, that was at verse 15. Let me see. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. But it says, it says uh, Deuteronomy 28. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, thy power to observe, to do all his commandments and the statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee. Curse shall thou be in the city, curse shall thou be in the field, curse shall thou be in the, curse shall thou basket in thy store, curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy hand and the increase of thy kin and the flocks of the sheep. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in. Cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord sent upon thee cursing, vexation, rebuke, and all thou settest down hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed, until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings. Whereby thou hast forsaken me, okay? The Lord shall make up, make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from the land, off the land, whether thou goest, possesses it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with fever, and with inflammation, and with extreme burning and with sword 
and with blasting and with maledu. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heaven is over thy head shall be brass. And the earth that is under thee shall, shall be iron. Okay. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust from heaven. It shall come down upon thee. Until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. And thou shalt go one way against them. And flee seven ways before them. And shall be removed into. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Now I'm going to. Okay let's go into this verse right here. It says the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Lynchings. Okay. You getting persecuted in front of the so-called white man, you know, getting hanged. Okay, look at look at Esau today. He's shooting Jake for no reason. Look at the Jake that got killed for that female police officer. Um, she went up in his house, um, thinking it was her apartment, and he and she shot the guy. But yet you had a a, 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 a so-called Negro woman having pity on that woman. Now, if 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 a if a regular Jake did that to a so-called white woman, oh, Jake would get the maximum penalty. He would get the maximum uh, sentence, you know, which is messed up, man. It says, "And flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth." Now, didn't I? Um, Read, let me see, I think it was, let me see, let me go back. I think it was, I know it was in Deuteronomy. Um, you should go back, you should go back to, uh, go back to Egypt in the way of ships. Let me see if I can find that verse. Uh... Yeah, it's the last one, verse 68. Um, it says, and the, ah, oh, shoot. Hold on. I don't want to close this. Okay. It says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Okay. And then when you go back up, to uh, when you go back up to, I forgot which one I was on. Uh, come on, come on, which one I was on? Okay, was it twenty? Ah, man, lost my train of thought, Akim. I should have I should have marked it in my sword here. Uh, let me keep going up. Okay, yeah, verse twenty five. Okay, it says the water y'all bash me shot. It says the Lord shall cause them cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Okay, now when you go into Deuteronomy, you stay in the same the same um, book, the same chapter in Deuteronomy, and go down to verse sixty eight. It says the precept is the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, okay. And that's talking about the ships coming back here to America, coming here to America, and, uh, and us being slaves. And we're still not free, even though, yeah, we had the Civil War and all that stuff. We're still not free. OK, we're still not free. Look, look, at, look what the Jake went through in the, in the 50s and 60s, you know, 30s and 40s. You know, even after the uh, Civil War, Jake was still getting persecuted. Look at uh, 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 what's it called? Black Wall Street. Look how that was ravished. All right.
Okay. Um, and thy carcass shall be meat unto the, all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray from fray them away. And if you look and uh, do your research, black babies babies were used for alligator bait, man. You know, all black babies were used as alligator gate gate bait, and and these Edomites and other nations tell us to get over it, get over it. Okay, we're gonna put your babies out there for alligator bait. You know, we might put. As a matter of fact, it's in in in, in scriptures. Um, roughly paraphrasing, it says, um, "You shall be dashed into in, uh, into pieces." You know, so. You know, righteously, we're going to persecute you in, in the kingdom, okay? We, you're going to go into slavery, okay? We're going to, um, according to the will of the Heavenly Father, you know, we're going to uh, uh, pay you back for what you did to us, okay, Esau? Uh, what if we paraphrase, he that, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, he that killeth, killeth. Let me get, let me get that. As a matter of fact, he that leadeth into, into captivity shall go into captivity. Um, let me see. Let me see. He that leadeth into captivity. Okay, Revelations thirteen and um ten. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay? So Esau, since you led us into captivity, you know, and when you go on to verse 68, that clearly says that. In uh, Deuteronomy, it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with shoots by the way of I speak unto thee. Okay, so who was the one who bought us here in ships? Esau, Esau, Edom. Okay, all right. So he that leadeth, leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. When you go into uh, Genesis 25, when you go into Genesis 25 and 20, uh, hold on, not 25, um, 27. And 39, it says, and Isaac, hold on, wait a minute. Um, I'll slack your brothers. Okay, when you go into Genesis 27, starting at verse 38, it says, Even Esau said unto his father, Hast thou one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above and by thy sword thou shalt live and shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou have have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off his neck okay so he that liveth in captivity shall go into captivity Esau was get uh, he that killeth with the sword shall be killed with the sword. Okay? Let's read that again. Revelation 13 and uh, 10. He that leadeth, leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Okay? Esau, what you given the sword? And what do you intend to, what did you do with that sword? Okay? You killed with that sword. Okay, so Esau, since you let us in, you let us into captivity. You're gonna go into captivity. You kill us with the sword. We're gonna kill you with the sword. Okay, that's in scriptures, point blank. All right, that's in scriptures. All right. Um. Now, what verse was I on that time? I think I was on. Let's see. Okay, we're going to keep reading these curses. 
Um, yeah, we're just going to keep on reading these curses here. Let's see. I was on 25. Okay, now let's go to, uh, okay, and let's go to 27. The Lord will smite thee with the blotch of Egypt and the emrods, with the scab and the itch, and with the itch, whereof canest not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, blindness, astonishment of heart. Yeah, man, you see a lot of our, a lot, a lot of our people on the street bugged out, man. Bugged out in the mind. You know, talking to themselves, everything. And thou shalt grow at noonday. Let me see, hold on. Let me see if I had any precepts to go along with that. Um... Nah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, let's keep reading. Uh, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday as, as the blind gropeth in darkness. Thou shalt not prosper in, in thine ways. Thou shalt not, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. Okay? Now, you do have some jakes who are prosperous, but that's because they gave their soul up to the devil. They gave their soul up to wickedness. Okay? Thou wife... Mm. Hold on one second, Akin. Okay, sorry about that, brothers. Um, let me see if this thing is working. Okay, yeah, all right, I'm on. All right, yeah, sorry about that. I had to go to the restroom. Um, but let's keep going. Uh, verse, this is Deuteronomy 28, starting at, uh, starting at verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell in therein. Thou shalt plant vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof, okay, and um, this to me it talks about the Negroes and the so-called Iskarites. Um, perfect example. Um, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the immigration thing, but you have a lot of immigrants, a lot of especially Iskarites, who are here in America, and you know some from Central America, uh, South America, mainly Iskarites. Who are working in these fields, okay? Working in these fields. And some of the people that are over them, you know, which um, I would imagine probably be some of these wicked ass Edomites. Um, there was a case where this lady was an immigrant and she was illegal. And this guy wanted to have sex with her. So he was sexually harassing her. And he, he raped her, basically. But she didn't want to say anything because if she did, you know, she can get, they can find out she's an illegal immigrant and then she can get sent back to her country and she had a family to take care of. Okay? So, you can see, man, um, Esau is just wicked. And he all, Esau did the, uh, the blacks like that, too, that were working for him. You know? Well, yeah, yeah, the... I was going to say, the, I don't know if the slave master did it, but I would imagine the slave master did do it. Did sleep with some of the slaves, you know. Um, but, you know, yeah, some of the slave masters had guards watching the jake, making, making sure that they, you know, didn't try to escape. You know, some of those uh, guards would rape our women, you know. And, and the father couldn't do nothing about it, man. Couldn't do anything about it. Which is messed up. But you know what? Hey, Esau, if we see one of your daughters or one of your wives who looks good, yeah, we can we can uh kill her and, and I mean not kill her, kill you and take her from you. Same thing with your daughter. We you know we get we're gonna take your daughters, we're gonna take your take your women, especially if they look good, all we gotta do is kill you. <laughs> you know. But that's coming to you, Esau. That's coming to you. All right, and then when you go down 
thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell in them. Um, a lot of Jake, especially Mexicans, man, they, they doing all kinds of construction, man. I mean, there's a, a place downtown for a lot of the, a lot of uh, so-called Hispanics are in, in, in that, you know, are building that complex. All over South Florida, you see a lot of Hispanics, man. And those condos, those high-rise buildings, those houses that they build, they're not going to do well in them. A lot of those guys live in uh, trailer parks, man. You know, they work hard. You know, Esau paying them peanuts and, you know, they're risking their lives to make money just so they can get a little piece of bread and a little piece of bread for their kids, you know, food. And they still got to go, you know, they're building these nice luxury houses, but yet they're not going to be able to live in them. That's that's some foolishness right there. But you know what? These Edomites, you're going to build our houses and you're not going to live in them when the kingdom comes. Okay. Same thing with the uh, field. It says, uh, thou shalt plant a vineyard and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Okay? So you get the food, the produce and stuff, you pick it, you know, and it has to go to a warehouse. That, that, that food is not for you. You are there to pick that food and to uh, get, pick it off the plant or the vine or whatever. And then it goes to somewhere else to get processed and turned into um, a certain type of food. Like if the, like here, the vineyard. So... That those grapes are gonna be turned to wine, you know, so that so that the other people can drink it, you know, and 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 Jake get paid peanuts, man, you know. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat. Therefore, thine ass shall be violently taken away, uh, from before thy face, and shall not be restored. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies. Uh, thou shall have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto other people. Okay, and that's going into slavery, man. A lot of our sons and daughters were sold unto, unto um, different plantation owners. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the... Okay, let's, go, let's read that again. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto other people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the long day, and there shall be no might in thy hand. So, you, you know, back in the day, your child was taken away from you and sold. You couldn't do nothing about it, or you would die. You know, you could cry and scream and you know uh have sorrow but that's about it man so Esau you got it coming you got it coming all these things that you did to us you got it coming buddy you got it coming and it's gonna be a whole lot worse than what we went through whole lot worse verse 33 their fruit of thy land and all thy labors sh shall a nation which thou knowest not, eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed, so that thou shalt be mad for thy, for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. The Lord thy power shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with sore botch that cannot be healed, from thy sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. The Lord shall bring thee Bring thee in thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation whether nor thy fathers have known that shall serve other gods, wood and stone. Christianity, Catholic, Catholic, uh, Roman Catholics, you know. Uh, look at that uh, image that's in uh, Brazil right now. A picture of Serapis Christi, Jesus, so, you know, G Jesus Christ. That stone. People come off from all over the land just to see that, you know. But yet I heard um, one guy told me that lightning has hit, has hit that statue so many times. <laughs> you know, y'all just need to give it up, man. I know it's a it's a marketing thing, people. You know, they want people to go into Brazil. I think it's Rio de Janeiro or something like that. You know, it, it basically that statue is like a marketing 
thing. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> you know, it's a marketing thing, you know. But people still believe on Chessy. You know, they still believe on Chessy. So, I don't know. You, you keep believing on that, you know, Chessy bullcrap, you're going to get destroyed. Okay? But let's keep going. And thou shalt become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Okay? Um, I don't think I had that word. Byword. Yeah, but let me look it up. Okay, I had thought I had it. I ain't know if I had a definition of it, but let's let's get let's go into it and look at that word by word. By word, a person or thing cited as notorious. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me make sure I spelled it right. Uh, yeah, by word. Okay, a person or thing cited as a notorious and outstanding example of embodiment or something. A word or expression summarizing a thing's characteristics or a person's principles. Okay, all right, let me see if there's another definition. Okay. Let me see in Webster Dictionary if they have a better, clear uh, definition. Okay? All right. Let's go into Webster's Dictionary. And let's look up that word by word. Okay? B-Y-W-O-R-D. Okay, by word. Okay, uh, one that personifies a type. Okay, a frequently used word or phrase. Okay, a uh, a pro pro proverbial saying. Uh, okay, one that is noteworthy or notorious. Okay. A frequent, a frequently, a frequently used word or phrase, okay. So by words are not, uh, they uh, you start put by words on us, okay. Certain phrases on us, certain certain char uh, um, impose char certain characteristics on us, um, by using those by words, man, like Negro, okay, um. Uh, Latino, um, Indian, you know, these all put those words on us. We're not uh, uh, blacks, we're not Negroes, we're not so called Hispanics. And, um, you know, we are Hebrew Israelites, even though we may have different shades of brown, you know. Okay, now let's go to uh, verse 38. Thou shalt carry much seed. Out into the field, and shall not gather but little therein, for the locusts come to consume it. Thou plant, thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Thou shalt have all the trees throughout all the coast. But thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. Verse 41. Thou shalt begot sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Okay? And even today, man, you still can, even today, you know, you don't have your kids out there slaving like back in the day. But even when you go to work. You got to work 10, 12 hours a day. You may only get a day off. By the time you get home, your kids are already sleep. You don't got that time much time to spend with your children. And then back in the slavery days, um, kids, they had to work too. They had to work also, you know. Verse 
But, you know, these Edomites and the other, other heathens talking about, oh, get over slavery, get over it, get over it, get over it. You know, which don't make no sense, man. All, all thy trees and fruit of thy land shall locusts consume. Okay? The stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come low. Okay? And look, and the stranger that's in our land today, that's uh, Esau Edom, the Amalekites, the so-called Jews who are in Israel today, man. They're the ones that are set high. Okay? They own, I've I, I been looking at these real estate signs, and I see a lot of these names, like Berkowitz, all these names that end with Z, Litzowitz, Berkowitz, you know, Jew, Amalekai, 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 <laughs> you know, they were given the fatness of the earth, man, especially, you can see that with the real estate market, you know, the realtor, the guy that owns that building is a Jewish, so-called uh, Jewish person. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Yeah, man. Um, when you go back to uh, Lamentations um, 13, it says, They took the young men to... Oh, man, no. Uh, when you go to Lamentations, it, says, it talks about the wood. Yeah. Um, let, first, let's read... Um, Deuteronomy 4, 4, Deuteronomy 28 and, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and, um, 44 again. He shall lend, uh, lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall, oh man. Yeah. He, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Okay. And right now, we're the tail. Would tell right now, okay. Then when you go down to verse uh four in Limitations five, it says, We have drunken our water for money, and our wood is sold unto us. So here's Esau. Uh he we have to go to him to to get a loan. Um, like it says in Deuteronomy 44, he shall lend to thee. What do we have to go to get money for a house? We have to go to a bank. More than like, and you know, the, the Rothschild, Rockefellers, DuPonts, the elite families own those banks. Well, we have to go to them to get a loan from the bank, okay? And then when you go down to uh, uh, Limitations 4, 5 and 4, it says, We have drunken our water for money, and our wood is sold unto us, okay? Wood, that is material used to be. Uh, uh, to be Used to build a house. It's also a source of fuel. Okay. You got a light bill you got to pay. Okay. You got to pay for gas. Okay. All right. And then when you have, when your house is, when you actually get a house, you have to pay a mortgage. Uh, what's the verse say? Uh, we, will, we will be subjected, subjected to payments. Let me see. Subject to payments okay the book of Baruch alright the book of Baruch chapter 3 uh, going down to 8 behold we let me see is that chapter 3 verse 8 behold we are yet this day okay okay come in the book of Baruch, it says, chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. And then now, you, when you read further up um, in Deuteronomy, man, it says, like the first, the first uh, scripture in verse in, in chapter twenty eight, the first verse. It says, 
it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligence unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations. So those nations are, are supposed to come to us for certain things. We are not supposed to go to them. We are not supposed to go to them. And you see Esau set up these check cashing stores too in, 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 in the ghettos and stuff, man. And then when you get your next paycheck, you got to, you owe, um, it depends how much you get. If you get like the full $500, dollars you you got to pay them back $50, you know, and it's like a circle. It keeps coming over and over and over again. And every two weeks or every week when you get paid or every month, uh, you got to go back to that check cashing store, give them your check plus another $50. Not give them the check, but you gotta give them back what what you owe them and another fifty dollars. Wait twenty four hours, get another loan. You know, it's like a cycle, man. It never stops. You know, so they got us with the check cashing stores. They got us in the banks. We even the upper upper middle class jays. You know, if they want to start a business, they have to go to Esau to get a business a small business loan. Okay, you know, so we have to go to them. Uh, to get things, to get material, okay, all right, um, let me keep going, let's keep going, uh, I forgot where I was at, oh man, it's like it, brothers, I was, Let me see, where was I at? Uh, okay, yeah. 45. Deuteronomy 45. Moreover, all these searches who come upon thee and self pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearken, hearkenest not unto the voice of thy Lord, thy power. To keep all these commandments and these statutes which he uh, commanded thee. Now, if you get a chance, go over these laws. I mean, go over these curses in Deuteronomy 28. Okay? And think about the situations that you're in. and uh, The situations um, where if, if you are so-called, you know, Israelite. Go over these curses and think about who these curses pertain to today. Okay? Um, let me read verse 45 again. And all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thou God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Okay. And people always say, this is the good book. This is the good book. But do you honor the law, statutes, and commandments in this book? Okay. Jesus, I mean, Yahweh Shah came, who in the world, even called Jesus Christ, he came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law, man. Okay. All right. Let's look, let's get that up as a matter of fact. All right. I come not to destroy. The law, all the prophets. Okay, Matthew, um, Matthew five and seventeen. Think not, I am come to destroy the law, all the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Okay, so the most Yahweh Shai came to fulfill the law. He did not come to destroy the prophets. He did, he did not come to persecute the prophets. Okay. All right. And that's what people do when they hear this truth. They want to argue with the prophets, man. Some of them want to kill the prophets for bringing out this truth. Because when they when it's brought out what they have been taught was a lie, they just get very offended. Look at that lady in uh um uh what's that movie called? Um with the black guy getting, you know, I hadn't seen it yet, but the Jake getting, he had a white girlfriend, um, and he went to this, her parents' house, and her parents had all these black people working for her, 
uh, working for um, her family. Uh, what's that movie called? Um, Get Out. Yeah, Get Out. You know, and that lady in the preview, um, I think the one date, the, the white girl's Jake boyfriend was asking some lady something and she got all freaked out about the question. She was like, no, 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 no. That's how some people be when you talk to them about Christianity and the white Jesus and stuff like that. And they, they be like, no, no, no. You know, they get all freaked out about it, man. They, they are so indulged in, 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 that, in that false belief that it just freaks them out that it's a lie. Okay? All right? Now, let's go into that word fulfill. Okay, let's go into that word fulfill. If you, okay, to bring to completion our reality, achieve or realize, okay, something desired, promised, or predicted. Okay, so Yahweh Shah came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. He came to bring the law to reality. Okay, they have they have you realize that. Um, you just still have to honor the law, statutes, and commandments, and and Yahweh Shai did. He observed the the uh the, the 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 Passover, you know. Okay. Okay. He 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 observed the Shabbats, and we, to this day we still have to observe the Shabbat. Okay. All right. Um, let's just keep going, and thou shalt be upon thee for a sign and wonder. Upon thou seed forever, because thou servedest not the Lord thy, thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. You know, it says, uh, there's a precept for that. Um, delight, just, delight yourself in the Lord, and he started to give you the desires of your heart. Let's get that. Delight thyself. In the Lord, okay, what verse is that? Psalms, wait a minute. Okay, Psalms 37, 4 and 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Okay? So we went off, man. We didn't do what the Heavenly Father told us to do. So therefore, the curses came upon us. All right? Let's go to verse 48. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron around thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. And right now, that yoke of iron is still around us. It's not around us physically. Like it was back in the slavery days, but you having to work and you having to pay for water, you having to pay for uh, uh, for the materials uh, to to help build your house. You know, you got to get a loan from the bank. You know, that's that yoke of iron, man. You subject to payments. Okay, just like it says in uh, Barak, Baruch uh, three in um, chapter eight. Um, it says. Uh, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of thy, of thy fathers. Okay? Let's keep going. The Lord shall bring thee again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle uh, fleeth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation of fierce continuance which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shoe the favor of the young. Okay, and, and I went into that. Uh, um, these Edomites calling uh, Negro, uh, the so-called Negro a boy, an uh, older Negro, like a 70, 80 years old, a boy. Come here, boy, you know. And the earth, and he shall eat of the fruit of thy cattle and thy fruit of thy hand, and thou shalt be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn or wine or oil, or increase thy 
kin, or flocks of thy sheep, uh, to have destroyed thee. And when uh, those so-called whites came to the here, they they messed not the Native Americans. I mean, yeah, they messed the, messed the Native Americans up, man. And the Native Americans showed them how to take baths, to show them how to, you know, how to cook certain foods, you know. But Esau took that all away from them when when um when they when 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 the the Native Americans gave them that knowledge, you know, Esau 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 uh. Um, stabbed them, stabbed them in the back at the end, you know. And he shall besiege in that, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls are come down, wherein thou trustedest throughout all my land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. Throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons, and of thy daughters, which the Lord God hath given thee in siege, and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, black on black crime, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege. And in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thine gates. And the tender and delicate woman among you which not have adventure to set the sole of her feet upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward her husband of her bosom. Okay, perfect example is that. Child support, <laughs> you know, her being the, the 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 breadwinner in the family, she thinks she can um, tell a man what to do. Let me get let me get there. Uh, a woman so a woman shall surpass a man. A woman shall surpass a man. Okay, that's Jeremiah 31. And um it says, How long will you will you get will you get about? Wait a minute. I think that's the verse I wanted. It, I thought it was another verse, but I, I'll read it anyway. It says, How long will you get about? O oh, you backsliding daughter, for the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall and come hold on and come wait a minute. No, 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 no. That's not right. Uh what's that verse said? Hmm. I know it was. Is it Jeremiah? Okay, I think it's in Jeremiah. Okay, let me look it up. I can. I knew it was. Um, let me see. Jeremiah. It might. That might be it. Jeremiah, uh, thirty-one. Let me see. Thirty-one and twenty-two. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Let me see. But let me let me skip that off here. Um 
maybe I'm not thinking about it correctly. Uh, I don't know if this is the, the verse, but it says, how long will, okay, Jeremiah 20, 31 and 22. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Okay. But I don't think that's the one I wanted, though. I think there was another one. And I hope I'm uh, saying it right. Is it surpass or compass? Oh, sometimes I get, you know, let's see, come. Okay, but we, I'll tell you what I can. When I find that verse, Lord willing, I do another lesson on it. But um, you got women uh, being the head of the households today, man, thinking that they're the boss because they make uh, a certain amount of money, you know. Um, so, therefore, they have an evil eye towards their husband because they're like, oh, why can't you go to college and get an education like me? You got no excuse. But little did they know that man is there for protection. If a man comes up in that house, a burglar or something comes up in that house, what is the woman going to do? He's going, She's going to elbow the man that she's laying beside him. Like, go, go, go see what's going on. Go see what's going on. Oh, but what about that, that proud-ass woman, feminine spirit that you had? You know, you go out and check. I'm standing my behind right here. You know? All right? Um... Let's read 56 again. The ten, hold on. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her feet upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward hus the husband of her bosom and toward her son and towards her daughter. Okay, so the woman, you women, you're not so, you're delicate. You're not supposed to even have your feet touch the ground. You know, all women, the, the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite women. Fifty-seven, and toward her younger one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all blessings, secretly. In the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not exert to do all the words of this law that are with written in this book, that they mayest fear the glorious, fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. So in, in this verse right here, specifies that the Lord. It's not all love. Okay? He's not all love. Okay? It says, May fear the glorious and fearful name. Yes, he's glorious, but he's also, hey, you, you mess with the most high. You don't do what he tells you to do. He's going to chastise you. He's going to punish you. Verse 59. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and their plagues great of thy seed. Even great plagues and of long continu continuance, sore and sore sickness and long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and he shall in of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of this law. Then will the Lord bring them upon thee until thou be destroyed. A perfect example. Look at the coronavirus that's going around. I mean, it hasn't really hit America fully yet, but and it might just be like a trial run. But it might be another disease that these, so, these devils are going to come up with and are going to release in America. You know, they don't think that an epidemic... Disease can't start in America. Yes, it can. All the all the the CDC has to do is re just release it. You know, put something in the water, put something in the food, and then all of a sudden there's a new virus going around. 
you know. So don't think that these diseases can't start in the United States. Yes, they can. Okay. Um, verse 62. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for the multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy power. Perfect example is the Native Americans. There are very little Native Americans here um, in the United States now in Canada. Okay. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoice over you to do good and multiply you, the Lord shall rejoice over your over you to over. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to naught. And you shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest possesses it. Okay, so the so the most is not our love. He's rejoicing that you're being destroyed. You know? So the most is not our love. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth unto the other. And there thou shalt serve gods which neither now thou fathers have known, even wood and stone. Christianity. You know, that's one religion that uh uh, Muslims, you know, Hinduism, okay, being a Buddhist. Among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall thy soul of thy foot rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and falling of eyes and sorrow of mind, especially here in America, man, you know. Especially here in America, our, our so-called Negroes, man, are, are oppressed. You go in a white neighborhood, you get pulled over, you know. And sometimes they want to plant evidence on you, and then you just go through the system, you know. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have no assurance of thy life. Yeah. Um. When you go out to go to work, you know, when you live, you know, <laughs> you go out to go to work and you're driving, you don't know if the police going to pull you over. You don't know if the police going to go, you know, you walking down the street, you don't know if the police are going to suspect you for robbing another lady or, 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 or someone or suspect you for doing a crime. You know, you don't know, especially the so-called black man, you know. In the morning, thou shalt say, would God it were even at even thou shalt say, would God, would Yahweh? Let me read that again. In the morning thou shalt say, would Yahweh it were even? And at even thou shalt say, would Yahweh it were morning? For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou fear. And for thy sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Translating slave trade. Okay. By the way of I spake unto thee. Does that pertain to these so-called Jews in uh, Israel today? No. They didn't come over here on ships. They actually funded the ships that come up the uh, to come over here, yeah, and the whites that did come over here with the with the ships, they were uh, being hired to um, to make sure that the uh, the transport of those slaves uh, went smooth, you know. Okay. Um, what do you call them, shipmates or whatever? I don't know. And the Lord, okay, let's let's go with verse sixty eight again in Deuteronomy. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way of I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Okay. Who's the enemy? Who's the enemy? Okay, let's go to Job 9 and 24. 
Let's go to Job 9 and 24. I think it's Job 9 and 24. Let me see. The earth, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. Okay. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, who and where is he? Talking about Esau. Esau's the enemy. And then when you go to uh, Deuteronomy um, 25. I mean, not Deuteronomy. So like it. Uh, Genesis um, 25 and 25, um, you know, it, it says in verse, I mean, 25 and 23, so like you, I mean, it says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. So two nations are in are in uh two nations were were in Rebecca's uh womb, you know? Okay? Uh let's bring out another piece up. Okay. Okay. Uh the Lord, the Lord loved Jacob, but hated Esau. Okay, Romans 9 and 13. Okay, Romans 9 and 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. So if the Most High hates you, you an enemy. You just, you you an outcast. You you not liked by the Most High. Okay, you not liked by the Most High. Look, if you don't know what enemy is, people use that word all the time. I ain't got to look it up. Look it up yourself. Okay. As it is written, Jacob have I Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Esau's the enemy. Okay. Esau's the enemy. It says. Uh, there shall be so unto your enemies. Okay, all right. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. So Esau sold us, man. Esau sold us. We were in slavery in other nations too, you know. And um, but Esau, man, you, you definitely gonna pay for what you did. And you heathens also who had a hand in our slavery. Okay. Uh, and also, I bring out one more precept. Um, when you go to the book of Malachi, it says uh, in chapter one, Malachi one, and um, verse two. Let me see. Make sure this is the King James version, because. Uh, let me go in the scriptures. Let me just go on my sword. Because um, I just want to be sure this is the right doctrine. Okay. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom saith. Hold on. One minute. Oop. Wait a minute. Yup. Okay, I'm getting a little confused here, brothers. Bear with me a little bit, brothers. Sorry about that. Um, okay, all right, I got it, yeah. Uh, Malachi, uh, starting at chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of the word of the burden of the war, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, say of the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, say of the Lord? Yet I love Jacob, going down to verse 3, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons. Okay, now let's go down to verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return... And build 
the desolate places, saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call they shall call them the border of wickedness, the people against whom the Lord hath in the nation forever. So right now Esau is steadily building his kingdom, but the most high is going to destroy this place, man. He's definitely going to destroy this place. Okay? So Esau Edom, you got something coming coming to you. It's called righteous anger. Okay? From the Lord. From the Lord thy power. All right? All right, Akin. Well, uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. And I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shah. By Hashem, Akakadash, Barakatan. And until uh, next time, Shalom.